Hi everyone, I've had a few requests to show how I make um, some of the charms that I hang on my mixed media pages and mini books. Um, I showed these on a previous video and so I just thought I'd share some of the more, more basic techniques here and some of the materials that you will need for those. So most of my charms start with um, one of these which is a head pin and it's like an ordinary pin. Um, you've got the pin head there which stops your beads falling off but obviously it hasn't got the the sharp end like a, a real pin would and I tend to use um, the longer ones which are 50 mil or two inches long um, just because it's less fiddly you can buy an inch long and various sizes um, but I find them quite fiddly to work with any smaller so the two inch ones or the 50 mil is what I would normally use and they come in a range of colours so you've got your gold and silver um, antique gold bronze and there's a black one as well that I've seen um, so it depends what type of project um, you're working on as to what you'd need and the one I'm going to show you how to make is this one here um, so the head pin runs through the centre you can't really see the tip of it there because I've got an extra bead at the bottom um, and then you attach your beads and obviously whatever type of fastening or clasp you'd like at the top. So to make this particular one then, I start with um, a spacer bead, which are, these are 3 mil spacer beads. And again, you can buy these in the various colours to match your findings. Um, and the reason you might need those, um, firstly, obviously, as the name suggests, they create a bit of space between your, your main beads. And if you're using expensive beads, then obviously you'd want to space those out a little bit. But if you're using a large bead like this, you often find the holes are too big to stay on with the, the tip of your head pin. Um, so you'd use a spacer bead at the bottom just to make sure that that's secure. So I'm going to thread my first um, spacer bead onto the head pin. And then I'm going to thread my main bead, which is a, a lamp work bead. This is a 20mm lamp work bead. Okay. And then I'm going to add another one of the round spacer beads, the same as the one at the bottom. The next type of bead I used on here, these are also spacer beads, but these are a different type. These are daisy spacer beads, and these particular ones I think are 3mm or 4mm. So quite small beads. So I'm going to take one of those and this basically is to frame the next coloured bead which you can see the, the pinky coloured bead there. And this one is it's a natural gemstone bead. You can see those too well. Um, and it's rodenite. And it goes particularly well with the, the heart shaped bead that I chose. So I'm going to thread the rodenite bead onto there and then another of the daisy spacer beads. And then to finish I'm going to use another one of the silver spacer beads. So you can use whatever type of beads that you have. Um, I tend to use a lot of the gemstone, natural gemstone beads but they can be quite expensive. Um, and I also use a lot of the Swarovski crystals, which again can be expensive. Um, so if you're just practicing, you might want to start with maybe acrylic or glass beads, which tend to be cheaper. Right, the next thing you need, you do need some jewellery pliers for this. These are round nose pliers because the ends of them are rounded. And that's what you need to form a loop at the top before you add any attachments. The other type you can get are the flat nose pliers, which obviously are flat inside. Um... But these ones you just grasp with the tip of your plier and then you literally take your finger and bend um, your head pin around there and then remove your pliers and you will need some wire cutters and mine came in a set you can um, buy these at a reasonable price in a set so you've got everything you need and then what you need to do is just nip the wire um, so you've got enough wire to form a loop and join it together. So I'm just going to nip that there. And then you take your round nose pliers again. This is going to be a little bit tricky. Um, trying to do it in film. But you need to take your round nose pliers right at the very end. I'm trying to focus the camera. 
I don't think it's going to focus too well so close up. But you nip them right near the end and you need to um, just twist them so that that loop will join together. So I'm just trying to do this quickly. And then you need just to make sure that that loop is closed and it's going to hold those beads in place. And then you can manipulate it if you're not quite happy it's not straight um, you can obviously manipulate it a little bit but just make sure that it has actually closed up at the top um, sometimes I do take my flat nose pliers at this point as well um, just to flatten it a little bit and close the loop a little bit more at the bottom um, it is probably the trickiest part but with a little bit of practice it's uh, you can do it relatively quickly the next thing I want to take are jump rings these are open jump rings which means when you twist them they're going to open um, this one has just been partially opened what's important when you're using your jump rings you don't pull them apart that way you actually twist them um, towards you to open them okay so they look like that when they're open and then you can hook onto here obviously it needs to go on the loop on your charm and then if you've got any clasps or fastenings that you need to go on for mine I tend to use 12 mil lobster clasps um, but obviously it could be jewellery finding or anything like that um, to make earrings um, or whatever it is that you're doing and once you've got it on your jump ring then you use your jump ring to attach where you've just formed that hook with your head pin and then you would twist it closed again so just twist it until it's shut and then you have your finished charm okay you probably take a bit more time on yours the other type you can use you can use these um, other findings called eye pins now these have a loop in them already and I use these if I want to make something that's a little bit longer and dangly and these have got jump rings in between so I'd start off again exactly the same way I'd start with um, one of the eye pins if I can get one out Oops. and probably start with let's take one of these beads so you start with your beads and then you might want um, possibly a spacer bead in between and this time instead of adding lots more beads you might as I say you might add your spacer bead but not much more you'd form your loop straight away you would cut that off Oops. okay and then before you close your um, loop you'd want to attach a jump ring onto there or you can add your jump ring afterwards perhaps it might be easier if you're beginning um, to close your loop and then add your jump ring so I'll show you how to do that um, just close your loop as you did before then you need your jump ring which you need to twist as we said before twist to open put it onto the loop and then you would take your head pin and also attach that then close your loop so you're starting to get that more jangly effect then you would take your next bead and you do exactly the same thing you'd make your loop okay cut it and close it and then you'd carry on with the next one so you'd put another jump ring onto there another eye pin onto there and carry on until you've got as many charms on there as you actually want um, and it would look a very long one it would look something like that with the same finishing technique at the top so I hope that's been useful for somebody um, I do hope it's focused enough because it's quite detailed um, please leave a comment if you want any more information on supplies or techniques or anything Okay, thank you for watching. Bye.